Back at it again, baby, and um, it is getting horrible, terrible for the current administration. Let's dive in. The liberal media has largely defended President Biden, despite all the crises piling up under his watch. There's a lot of them, like inflation and gas prices, the border, the list goes on and on. Biden's failures and his dismal polling numbers have become impossible to ignore. That even some in the media, well, they are no longer running cover. The president claims that the U.S. is in a better economic position than almost any country in the world. But he's also facing public sentiment that is making clear that Americans don't feel that strength, not by a long shot. And the White House adrift from national tragedies to soaring inflation, the Biden administration is struggling. They looked flat-footed and caught behind Afghanistan, inflation, they just had to apologize this week, baby formula, the list goes on. As much as the White House is now trying to make it clear that they're on top of this and doing everything they can to deal with it, something, as Biden likes to say, was missed between the cup and the lip. Sometimes you just can't... What? Whoa! You know, it's, it's weird how that all happens all at once. How the mainstream media all shift at the same time, you know, their messaging. Oh no, everything's good, everything's great. Nobody's buying that. Oh, okay, yeah, everything's everything's terrible, everything's trash. You know, we checked out a video yesterday talking about the, uh, the ratings for Fox, MSNBC, CNN, and some of these other, and, and, and you know, some of the more, spe the, the specific shows under those brands. And Fox, if you haven't seen that video, I'll try to remember to put a link somewhere up top so you can go check it out. If I forget, remind me in the comment section. But Fox held like the top 17 spots, 17 before any other mainstream media news outlet was, you know, even seen. I think it was MSNBC was was like number 18 on the list, ranked number 18. Don Lemon's primetime show gets less views than Tucker Tucker Carlson's reruns at one o'clock in the morning. <sighs> Finally, they've opened their eyes. Fair to be on a team when you feel like you're losing and it's starting to feel that way in the Biden administration. Not only that, Harris, take a look at these headlines. There's actually speculation among the media about replacing him with another alternative in 2024, 538. Ooh. Americans <laughs> are unusually look lukewarm about a second term Vanity Fair. Democrats are already feeling out of their options. The Hill has a piece on potential replacements. New York Magazine, Democrats quietly search for an alternative. Who are they going to replace him with? Buttigieg? I don't think AOC is old enough, but I know she would try. Uh, who, who, who would they, seriously, who, who would they replace him with? And that's, that is horrible. As a president, your own party is like, nah, we're not putting you on the next ticket. Like, <laughs> that's how you know it's bad. Alternative, it's getting bad out there. I'm glad they're not on my team. <laughs> they gave up on their own guy. They did. Look at that. You want to wonder how he missed even acknowledging the 78th anniversary of D-Day. The guy doesn't have any friends. He doesn't have his own team. And the team team, the inside team, the liberal yeah. media team, right? Adrift and flat-footed on Afghanistan. Yeah. I mean, all of it is true. And a true friend would tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. So you know that's not who he's surrounded by because they're uh -huh. not telling him what's going on with America. Mm -hmm. We know he's not feeling it because he doesn't experiencing it. Yeah. Experience it, rather. And I don't know what's going on at Rehoboth Beach that he's carrying his own vacation bags and getaway. that like, Secret <laughs> Service picture and vacationing 30% of the time, so on and so forth. But somebody's got to hand him a little news blotter and say this is what's happening. He's upset because they keep correcting him. Well, he doesn't have the facts. But when you look at what they just showed on the wall, the wall our team who has our backs and can put that back up on the wall, when you look at that, you know that there's nobody standing behind him. So they literally are leading from behind. Yeah, he does not have the facts. In fact, it appears to be a fairy tale. Let's watch. This was this set the tone for the year. This was his one and only January press conference from this year. And here's what he said. Look, I didn't overpromise, and but I have probably uh, outperformed what anybody thought would happen. The fact of the matter is that uh, we're in a situation where uh, we have made enormous progress. He hasn't over he has overperformed, he says. He hasn't overpromised Emily. And then this morning it was like 
an hour ago. He tweets, the fact is America's in a stronger economic position today than just about any other country in the world. Independent experts have even projected the U.S. economy could grow faster than China's. This guy needs to wake <laughs> up. It doesn't matter. No what someone is telling you if you are feeling something totally different now I, I i don't care what's going on in the rest of the world i care about what's going on right here right here on u.s soil you know the same thing our government should care about instead of sending our money and cash all over the world yeah u.s soil this is what i care about all right we take care of us first apparently that's a, a foreign concept to um some people in in the administration but Things are horrible here. Terrible. Gas is almost $5 nationally. That is nuts. I remember thinking $3.50 was a lot for gas. You can tell me you're not hitting me in the face as you're punching me in the face, and I'm <laughs> going to feel something really different, as have all of these polls that have illustrated that, right? So we now know that 38% that of people in America feel that they were worse off now, they're financially, than they have been just a few years prior. Mm -hmm. And that is the only time, with the exception of the aftermath of the 2007 recession, that over Three in 10 people have felt that way, going back over 50 years. Mm -hmm. But you know what actually broke my heart the most was that six in 10 respondents to this particular poll said that they don't think that the American dream is achievable anymore. Mm. That absolutely broke my heart. And I thought about my grandparents immigrating here. I thought about mm. how my grandfather had to renounce his citizenship. They don't want you to achieve the American dream anymore. They don't want you to own anything. They'll provide it for you. They've said it. That's not a conspiracy theory. They've said it. There's literally a video out. You will own nothing. We shall provide it for you. Citizenship <sighs> to Italy in order to become an American citizen. And he proudly displayed that citizenship certificate on the wall all of the days of his life because to him, the American dream was real. I am the American dream because I'm his granddaughter. Going back all those generations and the fact that almost 60%, six out of 10 Americans really don't feel it's achievable anymore is absolutely heartbreaking. And this is Biden's America. And he's not arguing that point. He's not saying, I'm not going to let the American dream die. It hasn't died, and here's how we know, and here's what I'm doing about it. Exactly. Um, but we'll provide some more hope this morning. Harry <laughs> Anton over at CNN. Here you go. Get ready. Guess what? Since 1938, the Republican two-point lead on the generic congressional ballot is the best position for Republicans at this point in any midterm cycle in over 80 years. I don't often get hope from CNN. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Well, listen, the, the midterm elections, well, especially by for that. Congress in modern history, have been so... We, uh, I, I keep hearing, and I'm sure you guys keep hearing about the red wave. I don't even think that's the proper term. Now, of course, anything could happen. There's still time. We've, we've got a whole lot of time between now and then. But if the election was today, I wouldn't call it just a wave. It's a tsunami, red tornado, red earthquake all at once like it it, it it is going to be the craziest thing if it were to happen today it would be the craziest thing anyone has ever seen and i guarantee you there'd be a bunch of people like biden himself that would claim it was rigged the only hope the administration has is that people just kind of get used to uh you know the current state of living Ah, uh, yeah, gas prices are going to be $6 off. Oh, whatever. I'll figure it out. I'll ride public transportation or, you know what I mean? Like, that's their only hope, that people just kind of get lulled into this crappy state of living. And I don't think that will happen. Sort of a referendum on the presidency and what the American people think. Yeah, I actually chuckled reading that political article yesterday where Biden and his aides were flabbergasted that his poll numbers are worse than Trump. And they're saying, but how, how could you be us worse than Trump? And I tweeted and I said, it's pretty simple because people's lives are worse, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like people will take a mean tweet and $1.99 gas. But I think the bigger problem is, is that they don't realize <laughs> that um, they've created. She's spot on. <laughs> the media tries to make. Trump seemed like this horrible, terrible, no good, very bad person. But I don't care what the man said. Like she said, hell, I, I don't care if he sent out a bunch of mean tweets. I'll take that in a dollar ninety nine gas over five dollars average. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's simple. It's not complicated. This, this this is getting bad. It's getting real bad. And if gas prices keep going up and more truck drivers quit, it is going to get real ugly.
with all of these problems at home. And when you have a problem in your family, you know, when you have a problem with your girls, you and your husband, y'all are solving it in the family, right? Well, for these problems that Biden and his administration yeah. have, have created, energy, um, inflation, they're solving it with our enemies. They're talking about relieving uh, tariffs on China and getting nothing for it. They're talking about letting Iran and Venezuela, talking about letting the sanctions yeah. lapse, and, they're, and it's actually happening now, and importing their oil. Why don't we fix our problems at home? Why don't we not have to get baby formula from Germany? I can tell you Let's why. fix it in the house. Yeah. Great point. Because he doesn't like half the people in the house. <laughs> yes. That's why. Yeah. No, seriously. And, and I don't know that even... She's definitely right. Going back to Hillary Clinton with the deplorables comment, if they will ever get to the point where they don't have to love the other side of the country who may not vote for them, but they do have to lead them. They're everybody's leadership in White House. Yeah, yeah. rather than marginalize them. But a mean tweet in dollar ninety-nine gas. <laughs> maybe the line of the day, Morgan. Well done, Brian. <laughs> He's just sure so is. full of baloney on the economy, and that's what people care about so much. I mean, think about this. We've got $4.91 a gallon, national average gas, and what did he do? Declared Defense Protection Act for solar panels. Yeah. I mean, if you want to understand your polls, right. just look at yeah. that. That's it. You're full of baloney, Mr. President. Everybody knows it, and they can't afford to live in the country, that the economy that you've built here. Guys exactly. living in La La Defense Land, and we are paying the price. Hey, everyone. I'm Solar panels. He's literally asleep at the wheel at this point. I mean, there's there's no denying it. There's there's no there's no tiptoeing around it. Your your solution to that is defense is the, the Defense Production Act for solar panels. So you really are trying to transition, huh? Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna give him a bunch of solar panels. You know, we're we're gonna we're gonna shift. We're gonna shift. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Nobody wants your stupid solar panels. Sheesh, Louise. Like I I, I just. Oh man, but um, yeah. Do you, do you, do you think the administration will uh, uh, shift things in the right? Because there's still time. There is still time for them to to right the ship. But will they? Let me know in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.